Are you recording now? I am recording okay, now. Okay, good. Today we are installing a bunch of these faux beams. And uh, this particular brand is Fipon, which I know they're pretty popular. So the customer's already staining them themselves. We're gonna go install them in the kitchen. There's quite a bit of it. So what we're doing to attach them, because they're actually gonna be running uh, parallel with the ceiling joists. And so we're not gonna have necessarily studs to screw or, or nail into. So we're gonna be using toggle bolts. What I've done is I've ripped down two by six. I'm ripping down two by six to get three pieces out of it at just a little over one and three quarters inch wide. So that when this is installed on the ceiling, and it's installed on the ceiling, the beam will slip right over it and then attach there. So uh, we have about 12 of these long beams to do and uh, we'll update. Even though we picked very straight two by sixes before ripping these down, this is what can happen after you rip them down because of the tension and moisture in the board. Overnight, it, it looks like this now. So we don't want to use that because we would prefer our beam to not look like that. So with our mounting boards, what we're doing is we're pre-drilling about every 16 inches. Unfortunately, we don't have any ceiling joists to be able to attach to, so we're using toggle bolts for everything. And uh, so we're just pre-drilling and then we'll use the drill to mark those holes in the ceiling and then bore those out a little bit more for the toggle bolts. We are using a laser line. So we've got one up there already. What we're doing is we're lining up our mounting board that has the pre-drilled holes, lining that up with the laser and then we're re-drilling, we're just putting the drill bit through these holes to line up. Just, put, like a little, that. just put a little mark in the ceiling so we'll know exactly where to drill for the toggle bolts. drilling the half inch holes I recommend going nice and slow you don't want to go through too far and accidentally hit like a ducting or a vent pipe or a water pipe make sure when you pre-drill for the toggle bolts it's big enough that the shank will slide in and out um, like this because if it's too tight it'll actually thread into this and it'll thread into the wood it'll make it difficult when you're trying to attach everything so we put the toggles through with about a half inch of bolt showing past the toggle and then what you're going to do is just line them up you got to do one end at a time and what we do is just line it up there you just got to go one at a time down the line so they stay lined up Again, this is because we don't have ceiling joists here to actually screw into. So this is, these just grip the drywall. You can hear a little click when you push it in. That means the toggles have opened up on the back side of the drywall, so they're now holding the drywall. Um, the easiest way to tighten these, because they have to have tension on that toggle like this for it to actually screw into. And so if they're up like this, they're just gonna spin. So what we do is we push the board all the way up. We pull the bolt out. If you put some downward pressure, just go by finger as far as you can. And then if you get it up to within maybe a quarter inch, now when I go and put the impact driver on there, that toggle is in position putting pressure on it so it'll actually tighten up. So we find it easiest just to go ahead and pull the bolts through that one's a little too tight to go with fingers, so I'll grab a screwdriver, pry it out. And just pull it all the way through like this, and then go finger tight until you get it, like I said, up to about a quarter inch. Because otherwise what will happen is it'll just spin, 
and spin up inside there. And actually what can also happen is the toggle can um, spin off of the shaft if you're not careful. And then you're not gonna get another one up in there. So get it finger tight to about here and then use the impact after that. Look at that bald head. A man at work here. So I'm gonna line this one up with the other board. Zip zap it. Nice and tight. Don't wanna to go too tight because those toggles can actually pull through the drywall. I definitely don't wanna do that. Now this one's, see we're not totally lined up over here. So before we tighten the next one, there's a little bit of play because you put a half inch hole in the ceiling for these. So there's a little bit of play left and right. So it doesn't have to be extremely precise until you do this step. Once you tighten these down, that's a lovely sound. Huh? We can try. If it's a little bit, if it's tight enough to where you don't want to push super hard, so that's the problem. That one just happened to grab, but it doesn't always get that lucky. This one we didn't pull down yet, so you, you can kind of see it. It'll just spin and spin and spin forever. The toggle's not getting any tighter because it's not gripping anything. So I'm just gonna pull that down a little bit. Tighten it by finger. And once you're about to there, that toggle should be hitting the drywall now on the inside. Boom. That's how you build like Fortnite. Another way that you can put these toggle bolts in without using your fingers, if it's too tight, if it's like threaded in the wood, you can use a tool like this, a five in one tool or pliers or something, put some downward pressure on that so it keeps pressure on the toggle above the drywall. And then you can Until you get it close enough to where that toggle is now hitting the drywall. Make sure you strip it real good like yeah. he is this one. Strip it real good, that way the next guy will never have to, or never be able to take it out. Okay. So there's one other method you can use, and basically what I do is I use this tool right here. Got him! Bah! Give you. The salmon be running. We've uh, measured out our 12 foot one inch and 11 sixteenths of an inch more than 12 foot one inch. However many inches that is, that's what we've measured, uh, both sides. So what we're gonna do to cut this is I'm gonna use just a small framing square. I've got my pencil mark here, keep it lined up, keep it on here nice and tight so it stays perpendicular to it. I'm using just a little reciprocating saw blade with a fine tooth. I don't want the blade to go all the way through and cut this side because these blades get pretty wobbly at the end. So I'm going to keep it away from um, the edge here so that it doesn't go too far through it. And then we're just going to cut through. And we're going to rotate it and do each side independent. check this last this side here I'm gonna double check that we're still lined up with our line here and we are and so got a nice fresh cut on there cuts really easy cut smooth good to go put it in place so the most difficult one is done I'm trying to get that contour just right, but also being able to get this end to line up properly. So what we did was we pulled down in the center of the beam 
we pulled it down as we raised. Sorry, put in this end first so it matches the contour. It was about a quarter inch too long at the bull nose here to put it in. So we pulled down in the center to flex it. And then it got just enough flex to get it past the bull nose, Ooh. just tapping it past that the bull nose. Final one is going in right now. You might be asking why we're using 18 gauge nails. It's actually because the mounting boards are the exact same width as the opening of the beam. And so as we push it on, it gets a little bit narrower. And so it gets a super tight fit. Every single one of these beams stayed in position when we put it up there. So the nails were just extra security. Obviously they'd fall over time without the nails, but uh, the two inch nails are just fine. They're almost completely through the mounting on both sides. We're putting them about every 12 inches. So there's plenty of support holding those in. And it leaves zero marks that you can see from down here. So we don't have to putty and stain anymore. They're already stained by the homeowner and now she doesn't have to do any touch up because we use the smaller nails. We are all wrapped up. So as you can see, these four beams here appear to go completely through the center eye beam of the house. And then these three over here, just go through the dining area. And uh, it looks pretty awesome how it all turned out. I think the customers can be happy when they get home. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if I missed anything, comment, ask me anything. And uh, if you don't have any questions, just like it if you like it and subscribe. Thank you.